Hello. This PowerPoint is designed to answer question three on your unit 29 biology assignment on the nervous system. Let's get started. Nerve impulse transmission, how messages move from your sensors to your brain. Before a neuron is stimulated, a neuron is at rest when it is not transmitting a signal. Let's go with the parts of a neuron. The dendrites. Dendrites sense the external environment. Dendrites pass information about stimuluses from the external environment to the soma. The soma is like the brain of the neuron. The soma determines if this, inf if this information will be transmitted to the brain or not. It makes a decision. Is there enough stimulus to send a message? Or is there not enough stimulus to send a message? If the stimulus is strong enough, if enough dendrites feel the stimulus, many dendrites pass this signal to the soma. So if the stimulus is strong enough, many dendrites will be stimulated. They'll pass that message to the soma. The soma then will say, oh, I feel the stimulus and action potential will be generated. The action potential will pass down the axon to the axon terminal. At the terminal, the action potential will jump across to an interneuron. The interneuron will then pass that signal on to the brain. The myelin sheath is fatty material that surrounds the axon in some neurons and it will increase the speed of the axon potential moving down the neuron and thus increase the speed that we can sense things. Well, how is an axon potential caused? We need to talk about resting potential first. When a neuron is at rest, the inside of the cell membrane is more negatively charged than the outside. The difference in this charge is called the resting potential. So, usually a cell has a positive charge on the outside and a negative charge on the inside. Why is there an unequal concentration of ions? The resting potential is caused by an unequal concentration of ions inside and outside the cell. We already talked about there's more positives outside than inside. Thus, the inside will be no more negatively charged. Well, there are two types of ions. There's the sodium ions and the potassium ions. There are more sodium ions inside the cell than Sorry, there are more sodium ions outside the cell than inside the cell. So here's our sodium ions, and there are more of them outside the cell than there are in. That makes more of a negative charge. There are less potassium ions outside the cell and more potassium sides inside. The neuron has an overall negative charge because there are more positives, more sodiums outside than there are positives inside. Consequently, there is an overall negative charge across the cell membrane. Start of, an act, start of a nerve transmission. A stimulus causes sodium gates to open. So, a stimulus will happen. Sodium gates in the cell membrane will open up. Sodium rushes into the cell through these sodium gates. When this happens, the cell becomes positively charged. So the stimulus hits our, um, stimulates the uh, neuron. Sodium gates open. Sodium will rush from the outside to the inside, making the inside momentarily positive in just one spot. That you'll find out that that will cause sodium gates adjacent to that gate to open and they will become positive also. Action potential spreads. So an action potential, so a stimulus causes sodium gates to open. Sodium gates open and sodium rushes into the cell. That causes other sodium gates to open right next to it and more sodium rushes into the cell. This is a depolarization of the cell the membrane potential will go from negative 
to positive when this happens. So we have our resting potential. The stimulus happens, sodium gates open, and the inside of the cell becomes positive. This causes other gates to open right next to it, and the cell then becomes positive next to it. This causes other gates to open, and the cell then becomes positive next to that. And the action potential will rush down the membrane as sodium gates open all the way down. Returning the resting potential. Well, what returns the potential back to negative? Sodium, um, after the sodium gates open, potassium channels open. They open a little bit slower than the sodium gates. Potassium then will rush out. Potassium is a positive ion. So the cell will go from being positive on the inside. As the potassium rushes out, it will return back to a negative. Well, what returns the sodium outside and potassium back inside? There's a protein that uses ATP and it pumps potassium in and sodium out. It's called the sodium potassium pump or the sodium potassium transporter. So after the action potential is passed, potassium is quickly pumped inside the cell and sodium is quickly passed outside the cell. Summary of an action potential. So in summary, a stimulus causes sodium gates to open. So we have a resting potential. The sodium gates are closed. There's more sodium outside than inside. There's more positive ions outside than inside, and the cell has a negative charge. Here we are, the cell has a negative charge. When a stimulus happens, sodium gates start to open. When the sodium gates open, the membrane becomes positively charged because positive charges are moving inside the cell, making it go from negative to positive. The membrane potential goes from negative to positive. This causes surrounding sodium gates to open. So sodium gates around the sodium gate open and sodium rushes in. This causes the action potential to move down the axon as sodium gates open one after another all the way down the axon, making the inside of the cell positive. Right at the height of the sodium influx, potassium um, gates open and sodium gates close. So the sodium gates close at the height of your action potential and potassium gates open. Potassium rushes out, returning the cell back to a negative charge, and then the sodium potassium pump takes over, and it'll pump sodium out, potassium in, returning the ions to their regular concentrations. Next, potassium gates open, and the membrane returns to its negative resting potential. So at the axon potential, so the axon comes rushing down the axon and hits the terminals. When the impulse reaches the axon, vesicles in the terminal fuse to the neuron's membrane. So the action potential comes down. When the positive charge, when the membrane becomes positive, these vesicles feel this positive charge and they bind to the membrane. When they fuse to the membrane, neurotransmitters are released into the synapse, which is the space between two neurons. The neurotransmitters then bind to receptors on the other neuron. This stimulates the neuron to open its own sodium gates, and an action potential starts and rushes down. So this concludes the transmission of a nerve in an axon.